And here we are with Fedora 16, codenamed Verne after Jules Verne, which explains the rather interesting and pretty wallpaper, which of course is the underwater scene with a submarine from the book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Google it if you're not that cultured. Moving on. Fedora 16 is basically about system enhancements. Really, there's nothing to speak of as far as desktop usability is concerned. Of course, you get GNOME 3.2, the latest stock GNOME, uh, which comes with quite a number of features and enhancements uh, that, that lots of people have covered. So I'm not really going to talk too much about it. However, some nice things that I have mentioned, uh, such things as the, uh, as the preview. Uh, the Sushi Preview, which uh, pretty much is a drop-in replacement for Glubus Preview that a lot of other distributions uh, have touted in the past. Now, uh, so Sushi Preview is a nice addition, as well as uh, deep integration with online accounts that you can see here. You add a Google account and it'll tie in all of your contacts and your documents uh, through these wonderful little apps here in the GNOME system that synchronize all your contacts as well as your documents. Now, interestingly enough, they haven't actually included the, the official GNOME docs here, and I don't know why they haven't done that, because really it, uh, it distracts a bit from the usability of the system. However, other GNOME 3 distributions do have that app, and I'm surprised that they don't have it here. So a bit of, an, a, bit of a puzzlement there. Either way, uh, now Fedora 16 brings a lot of system enhancements. We've got a lot of new cloud technologies that have been built in, including but not limited to Aeolus Conductor, Condor Cloud, HackerFS, OpenStack, and Pacemaker Cloud. Now don't ask me what any of those are because I do not work in that industry. However, those cloud tools coupled also with the virtualization improvements that they've had, such as secure remote logins and uh, enhancements of that nature, make this distribution very scalable and very suitable for the enterprise, which brings me really to the purpose of Fedora, which is really a testbed for the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is what a lot of uh, corporations are using now. And it, of course, is what Red Hat Company builds their company on, and it's what keeps the Fedora project funded and thriving. And I think that's where the Fedora project really uh, becomes an important distribution in the Linux community. It might not necessarily be a distribution for the normal everyday user, as, uh, as we like to think. You really just get vanilla uh, desktop packages, so they have to run with whatever uh, whatever the desktop developers are doing at the time. But the thing is, is that Fedora really pushes the whole Linux development as a core system, Com contrasting to Ubuntu, which is really pushing desktop enhancements and user experience enhancements. Uh, Fedora is very much focused on developing the Linux kernel and the Linux core as a system, and they pay a great deal of development investment into making this system better. So that means that they've completely stripped out the HAL abstraction layer. So basically, now the system boots a lot faster. We are using system D now instead of system V. So the, the system does boot a lot quicker and the kernel does respond a lot faster. Uh, as well as that, the applications do launch considerably quicker than they did in Fedora 15. Don't ask me exactly how that works, but I have noticed it. As well as graphical uh, effects in the GNOME shell are also pretty snappy as well. So although this isn't a distribution that I wouldn't use on an everyday basis, those that are into, into Linux and seeing where it's going in, 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 as the core development, this is quite a bleeding edge distribution in that it is semi-stable. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for absolute productive environments because I don't think it's really designed to be that rock solid. But of course, if you want that, then you can go to the Red Hat alternatives like CentOS, uh, which is of course free and super stable. Of course, Fedora 16 is the testbed and the starting ground for all of those great distributions. So although uh, many, many uh, reviewers have questioned the place of Fedora in, in today's world, uh, I think it does really have a valuable spot for those who are into uh, Linux core system development and seeing what Linux is capable of on an enterprise and in a scalable environment. You just get stock standard GNOME apps in here, just like you did with Fedora 15, and really you don't have much else to, uh, to look at here. The ISO is not very big at all, it's barely more than 600, uh, it's barely more than 650 megs, and of course you can get KDE spins, XFCE spins, LXDE, pretty much anything you need. Uh, package management tools are there and kicking. Uh, really, there's there's no worries there whatsoever. The yum nowadays is very mature, and you can basically run anything from the terminal. And of course, that's what a lot of these users are going to be looking at. Uh, they're they're looking at using these systems uh, on servers, and so they need to be able to have awesome t uh, terminal utilities. 
uh, but it's not really what the everyday desktop user is going to be interested in. However, the technological advancements that these guys make is definitely valuable and we would be a long way away as far as system scalability and just awesome Linux technologies if it weren't for Red Hat and the investments that they put into their developers building Fedora and stabilizing it year after year into an enterprise level desktop. Now, having said all of that, I definitely do think that the package management needs a little bit of refresh on the GUI end. The terminal tool is very is, is really quite useful, um, but I really think the GUI needs a makeover of some description. You only get the standard add remove software, which has really honestly been around a long, long time. And although people know how to use it, it is just too antiquated now. With the fanciness of all, this, all kinds of software centers that we get, I understand that they're not going to waste uh, developer time on a simple user experience touch of people that already know how to manage their own packages. But uh, to be honest, even something like Synaptic does manage packages a bit better than the standard add remove that GNOME brings. Uh, so that is really my only complaint here as far as uh, Fedora as a core system is concerned. Now, of course, uh, there are KDE spins there out there, and I was going to have a look at KDE 4.7, but considering I'm going to be doing that upcoming in an OpenSUSE 12.1 review, I thought I might leave that behind. So. The one thing that I am going to be interested in with OpenSUSE 12.1 is going to be the comparison of these GNOME 3.2 desktops. I'm going to see which one I like better, and uh, as far as the actual overall system is concerned, it will be an interesting contest. So recommended audience for Fedora 16 is definitely those who are interested in Linux development. Those who want to test out new technologies that are being developed by Red Hat and its huge community of developers, cloud enhancements, virtualization enhancements, and a diverse ecosystem of software to back it. I don't think Fedora is going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Stability wise, I've actually noticed it's been pretty stable. As far as uh, comparing it to something like Ubuntu, uh, it's much more consistent in, in that the system performs much better across the board than having that weird a uh, quirky graphical glitch or something like that that sometimes Unity can throw at you at a moment's notice. Again, I think that really boils down to just using the vanilla packages that the upstream developers use. So GNOME and KDE are really as vanilla as they come. Apart from the wallpaper, that's it. You've, uh, you've got Fedora, you've got your distribution as a core with all the technology it provides. Apart from that, you're on your own. You set up your system the way you like it and hopefully it'll work well for you. So let me know in the comments below, have you had any experience with Fedora? A lot of people have used Fedora in the past and they've moved on to more consumer friendly options like Mint and OpenSUSE and Ubuntu since. So at which release did you leave Fedora and why? Thanks everyone again for watching. Give that thumbs up button some love if indeed you liked the video. Consider subscribing and I shall see you next week with OpenSUSE 12.1.